better than that. Let's give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. His worthy name. Well, stand to your feet with me this morning. We're going to just go right into prayer and just ask God to do what only he can by way of his spirit. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you, Lord. We honor your presence. We honor your anointing that's in this house this morning, Father God. We ask you right now, Lord, to have your way in our hearts, in our emotions, in our mind, in our physical being, Father. Have your way in every aspect of our lives as you see fit today, Lord. Lord, in this time of worship, in this time of praise, Father God, Lord, we ask, Lord God, right now that the burdens be lifted, that the weights be removed, Father God, that right now, Lord, in your presence, as we sing praises to your name, regardless of the circumstances today, Father, we will praise you at all times. And Lord, this morning, Father God, let the praises of our hearts exit this building and enter into the Holy of Holies, where your angels worship, where your angels praise. And let us too, Father God, worship you in one spirit and one accord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. All I know this morning is my God is victory. That's all you need to know this morning. He's got the victory. Amen. Let's put our hands together this morning. And reach for us in the victory boat.
morning. God, we're calling on that name today, Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. There's breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All hope is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
to stay consistent, to run the, the race without giving up. And Lord, right now, Father God, I pray, Lord, supernatural strength, supernatural endurance to your people today, Father. Lord, that you would raise them up from wherever they're at, or however they're feeling, Father God, and strengthen them by the power of your Holy Spirit. Anointing, have your work today. Let the anointing of your presence, Father God, permeate not only these four, within these four walls, but also an extension of our family who are watching us today, Father. Those individuals that are feeling like it's the end of the road, that are feeling like it's, there's no hope for them, there is hope. There is a, an everlasting love that gives us an everlasting peace. And Lord, I pray that over them today, Lord, that as they give in obedience to you, Father, that you will multiply more than enough in their homes and their households. Lord, yes, that even then you would give them more seed to sow into your kingdom. It's in your name that we pray and we bless your people. Amen and amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on up this morning and get to the Lord. Watching us 
from all over the state of Texas. Amen. And there was even a time people were watching us in Colorado and different states yes. and, and even giving their tithes and their offerings. Yes. Amen. So we thank the Lord for that. So Livingstone Family Church, let's give God praise for our extended family that watches us on uh, Facebook and live stream. Amen. Well, as uh, as we get ready to hear the word of the Lord today, I want to thank all of you again for helping us. Uh, we still have a shortfall of, uh, I think it's like about a little over a thousand to, to finish off the payment. They still got a few little things they're going to do. They're adjusting the light uh, fixtures. They're going to move them tomorrow and, uh, and uh, take off the other um, stickers that we have on there, the previous sign. And uh, so they got a little final little touch-ups they're going to do, but I want to encourage you and thank you, first of all, yes. for those that have already given, yes. Yes. amen, and helped us. Yes. Um, but keep in mind, amen, we don't want to owe no man nothing but the love of Jesus, yes. amen. So we want to make sure that we uh, take care of all of our debts and all of our bills and all of our expenses. You know, when it comes to the kingdom of God, I've learned that you just have to pay your bills, amen? You just have to pay your bills and uh, and God will bless you. So thank you for partnering with us and helping us do that. And uh, and also don't forget, tomorrow night we have prayer, amen? I want to encourage all of you to come out and pray and seek the face of the Lord. Something about being in the presence of the Lord. I mean, you don't, need, you don't have to be the greatest prayer warrior. You don't have to be the greatest intercessor. Just hang around this anointing. Amen. Just, you know, it'll it'll rub off on you. Yes. It'll yes. it'll linger on you. So Amen. let me encourage you to be here tomorrow at 7. And then also Wednesday night, uh, beginning a brand new series on Wednesday night. We started last Wednesday on the name that you can trust. The name that you can trust. And we've been talking about the names of God. And uh, so that's an exciting teaching. And I want you to, to come ready and with your notes, with your iPad, with your with your Bibles, and, yeah. and just be hungry for the Lord. Amen? Yeah. I mean, I'm hungry for Jesus this morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So good to see all of you here this morning. And especially, I want to uh, also thank uh, Brother brother Edward's father, his dad, Brother Jesse's in the house this morning. Yeah. And we're going to thank you. Brother, we love you. And we are continually praying for the Garcia family. Yeah. And, uh, you know, recently, um, his wife and our beloved sister, Sister Anita, went to be with the Lord. And uh, we just want to uh, continue to pray for the family yes. and the strength of everyone. Amen. Yes. We have a couple yes. of families that are still recovering uh, through different sicknesses. I uh, want to keep Brother Eddie and, and his wife, Linda, in prayer. Uh, they're battling sickness today and, and believing God for just recovery, getting yes. better. Yes. And uh, we also want to pray for the Lozanos and also want to pray for anyone else in this in this house that is uh, need help. Amen. Yeah. And I believe that God is the God that answers prayers. Yeah. God's the God that heals. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and also we want to uh, lift up uh, my, my brother Michael brought to my attention this morning before church that um, his business partner, uh, father, right? His dad. His mother, I'm sorry. His mother passed away recently, um, Terry. And uh, we want to lift up the family, Terry Maryland. We want to lift up that family. From, from Maryland. And, from Maryland. They're in Maryland. Oh, okay. And we want to pray for them that God would comfort the family, comfort their, um, you know, their their hearts. Because how many know it's not easy when you go through right. uh, pain and the loss of a loved one. Amen. So uh, we want to do that right now before we get into the word. We want to pray for all of you. How many don't know someone that needs the healing power of God? Yes. How many don't know somebody this morning that, that needs a touch from heaven yes. on their lives? Amen. Yes. So let's pray for them right now. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes and just lift up your hand to the Lord. Father, we thank you right now that, that you are the God of comfort and you're the God of mercy. You're the God of consolation, Lord. And we lift up, Father, my uh, brother's business partner, Lord, his family, Lord, the, the relative, Lord, that, that is deceased. Father, we, we just trust in you, Lord, that you are the God of comfort. You're the God of healing. You're the God of power. And I ask you, God, to do what only you can do by the Holy Spirit power and anointing. Lord Jesus, you said that you would send another comforter, the Holy Spirit, right. Lord, when you leave this earth. And we thank you for the comforter of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray, oh Lord, that we would just lift up, Lord, everyone that's sick. Lord, we lift up the, the Lozano's God. We lift up, Father, oh God, the uh, brother and Adam and sister Cassandra, Lord, there in, in Dallas, Fort Worth, oh God, that you would restore their lives, Lord God, through the winter storm and and the loss that they went through, Father, we pray you strengthen them, Lord. Pray that you strengthen, Father, the Lopez family, Lord, and, and that you would bring healing and strength and, and deliverance to their very lives, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you are our God. Yes, you are. 
You are Jehovah Rapha today, the God that healeth thee. And we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor for what you're doing even right now by way of the Holy Spirit. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. And amen. Can we give the Lord one more clap off? Amen. Can I get you to stand to your feet this morning and we're going to jump into the word of the Lord. If you have your Bibles today, go with me please to the book of Romans. The book of Romans. Chapter number 8, Romans 8 and verse 26 is where I want to focus on. Just this one verse of scripture is where I want to begin this morning's message. And I believe, I believe it is going to be a blessing to your life today. Yes. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. When you have it, say amen in the house of the Lord. Amen. Glad you're not in jail. Say thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. If you're glad you're not lying on the hospital bed, yes. say hallelujah. hallelujah. And if you're glad you're hanging around brothers and sisters in the Lord, yes. and yes. and this morning say praise God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Got somebody excited this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Everyone's getting be excited in church. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is better than going to the Super Bowl. Right. This is better right. than watching a movie. Well, you yes, can't sir. you can't go anywhere. They shut down all the movie theaters, right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we're hungry for the yes, word. Amen, church? Yes. All right. Romans 8, 26. And we have it also for you on the screen as well. Romans 8, 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, also helps in our weaknesses. I mean, I'm glad about that. Amen. That the Holy Spirit is here today to help us yes. Yes. in our times of weakness. Yes. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with, watch this, groanings which cannot be uttered. Look at that again. The Spirit of God, it says, makes intercession. When we don't know what to pray, when we don't know what to do, thank God that the third person of the Trinity the Holy Spirit of God yes. intercedes for us and it says in our hearts for us notice for us with groanings which cannot be uttered now this morning's message I believe is going to bless you it's going to help you because sometimes in life we don't know what to do sometimes in life we get overwhelmed by the battles the trials the struggles Maybe even decisions that we have to make in life. But we got to learn something. When we operate in this law, we're going to see victory. Yes, sir. And we're going to get the wisdom of God in every situation. And this morning, I want to talk about the law of intuition. The law of intuition. We're going to try to explain it to you. Amen. And uh, But the Bible tells us right there that... In our hearts, in our spirit, there are groanings. That's intuition. There are groanings which cannot be uttered. They're unspeakable. The things that God speaks to us in our hearts, we can't put a finger on it. We don't really can't explain it. We really can't even talk about it. But we know that there's something in our spirit that's saying, God, you're speaking to me. Yes. There's something going on in my spirit. And I want to help you tap into that this morning. The law of intuition. Remain standing. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you today in this church, in this service. Father, those watching us by Facebook. Father, those that are here present in this live service. Father, I pray that the anointing of God would capture our hearts and our lives. And that the spirit of Samuel would be on me. That not one word that you lay in my heart would fall to death ears and on the ground. But Lord, that we would all hear clearly the voice of God. Speak to us things that no preacher can speak to us. But only the Holy Spirit can. And Lord, we cancel every assignment of the enemy. And we take authority now of every foul, evil, wicked spirit of hell. And we declare that the word of the Lord would fall on good ground. And they would reap a bounds of a harvest in our heart and our soul. And we will be careful this morning, Lord. To give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It is in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated, church, in the presence of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. I believe this is going to be probably one of the most informative, life-changing messages that I have ever had the privilege of speaking on. Because this law of intuition is going to help you when you don't know what to do. Now let me tell you something, that most of our lives, we don't know what to do. Most decisions that we got to face in life, even as believers, even when we walk with God and talk with God, we, we really don't know exactly what to do. There's so many options. You know, I mean, it's like when you go shopping, you know, you, you got so many choices, and, you know, different shampoos and different cleaners and, you know, different waters you can buy, different things that are out there that sometimes you don't know what to do. And so I'm convinced that much trouble and disaster can be avoided, can be excluded in our lives when we trust our intuition. Yes, Let me say that again. I want to help you out this morning. I'm not your enemy today. I'm your friend. Yeah. I want to help you avoid potential disaster yes. and pitfalls of the enemy and traps and snares of the devil. Yes. And I believe one of the ways that can limit our trouble and we know we're going to have trouble in the world because Jesus said in this world, right. what? We're going to have tribulation. Right. Right. But as believers, we have someone working in us called the Holy Spirit. Right. And that Holy Spirit in us can help us avoid certain traps and pitfalls of the enemy. Right. But we got to learn how to tap in to the anointing. Yes, we got to learn how to tap in and hear clearly the voice of God. Right. So... When we trust our intuition, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the more we trust our intuition, the more empowered by God we become. Yes. Right. And the stronger we get, yes. and the happier we'll become. Mm -hmm. See, in reality, we talk about faith a lot in this church because we have been called by God to walk by faith and not by sight. When the Lord puts something in my heart, a project or an idea, whatever it is, I don't ever say, God, what's the dollar amount? I just say, Lord, give me the faith to believe you for it. Amen. Amen. Because all things are possible yes. to them that believe and have faith. Yes. And really faith, here it is, faith is simply passionate intuition. Amen. That's all it is. Yes. Faith, let me say it again. It is passionate intuition. Yes. Now, have you ever had a moment? You say, how important is this message today? This is so important because I think we can all relate to this. Let me ask you a question. How many of you today, this morning, watching by Facebook, here in this live service, how many of y'all can recall a moment or two in your life when you felt something in your gut that all of a sudden gave you an unknown knowledge about a situation, good or bad. Right. Right. Say that again. Right. How many have ever had a gut feeling in your heart? It might have been right. It might have been wrong. It might have been God giving you a warning about something. Mm. Or it might have been God leading you to a place of favor and blessing and prosperity. But it was an intuition. That's what right. it was. Right. It was an intuition. You couldn't explain it. You really couldn't even figure it out in your mind. But something in your said, something in your spirit said, go for it. Right. Something in your spirit said, wait a minute, we better, I better wait on this for just right. a moment. Yeah. And I better not take action just right now. Right. My wife was sharing with me how that one day she was sitting at a job working in the medical center. And this particular job that she had, uh, it was a job that got her opened up for her, but in her heart, she knew that there was something more that God had for her. Uh -huh. they, they were not really busy. They were kind of slow. And uh, she was getting paid. But it, it just wasn't the ideal job. You follow me? But how many know sometimes you just got to take what's out there so you can pay your bills? Amen. Amen. It's not the ideal job. Some of you right now are in that category right now. You're working a job that you don't really want to work. But you got bills to pay. Mm -hmm. And you got to put food on the table. And, uh, and God honors that. Yes. But in her heart, my wife said that she began to be, she was praying. And, and, and she was asking God to open up another door, a better door, 
more stable hours, and more consistent pay. And I think she was telling me that there were times that she had to call him and say, hey, you forgot to pay me, you know, th things like that. So it wasn't the ideal job. You know, she always had to, you know, talk to them and, and be on them and, and all that, you know. And, and, and But in her heart, she said, there's got to be something else. So she heard about this job that was available at a Christian Santa Rosa at Westover Hills. Well, I'm just making it plain this morning, amen. <laughs> She, she heard about a job opening at Christa Santa Rosa um, over on 151 in the West Over Hills area. Okay. All right? Uh -huh. And she looked at the job description, the requirements, and in the natural, she didn't meet the qualifications. Yeah. In the natural, they had, you, know, you had to do this, had to do this, had certain degrees and things like that, uh -huh. and on and on and on. And in the natural, it did not look like she was going to get hired or she was even going to be considered for the job. Mm -hmm. She didn't meet the requirements. Right. Amen. Have you ever applied for a job and you screened out the requirements and looked at the, the job and you said, man, I'm not even going to try. I'm not even going to waste my time because they're not even going to call me. Well, okay. But my wife had an intuition. I wish I had a church. This morning. I said, my wife had an intuition. Yes. You know what her intuition said? On, Apply anyway. Yes. Yes. I know you don't have all the requirements. I know you don't have all the descriptions, the specifications needed for that job. But I'm going to apply anyway. Yes. Yes. Guess what? They hired her. Six years later, she is still blessed by God. That was six years ago. Hmm. How many know that when you follow the intuition of the Holy Spirit, God can make a way where there seems to be no way? Market, right. But God can create a yeah. job for you. Yeah. God can open up a new door yeah. for you. Don't ever live at God. Amen. Amen. See, some of you, I know we we we, we think, oh, I'm, you know, I, I just can't, can't get it. I can't I can't work nowhere. No, no, no. If you really want to work, there's a job for you. Yes. Yeah. It may not be the ideal job. Right. It may not be the perfect job. Amen. It may not be the job that you're dreaming for. Right. But if you go in there by faith yes. and follow the intuition of the Holy Spirit. Yes. God can take you to another level. Amen. Mm. Amen. Even if you're not qualified. That's right. Even if you don't meet the standards. Right, right. Because you need to understand that you are favored by God. Yes. When you go to that interview, yes. you speak the favor of God. Yes. When, you, when you file an application, you speak the favor of God. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. I'm talking about the law of intuition this morning. Mm. Now, Let's go to this scripture. I want to explain something to you. Romans, go back to Romans 8, 26. Is it all right if I take my time this morning? Man, I'll tell you what. Devil is mad, and I'm glad because another soul he thought he had. My, 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 my. That's right. Likewise, verse 26, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. Okay, so when we're in a moment of weakness, that's not the time to give up. That's not the time to say, oh, Lord, I feel weak. Because my Bible says that when we are weak, we are actually strong in the Lord. Amen. That's why he said, let the weak say I'm strong. Amen. Let the poor yes. say I am rich. Yes. You got to make that your confession. Yes. Stand on the word of God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. So the spirit is willing to work in our moment of weakness. He's our helper. Look at that again. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us with our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we are. Anybody ever been there? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We know God wants us to pray. Right. We know that God wants us to spend time with Him every day mm -hmm. in the secret place talking to God. Yes. But how many of have ever felt lost yes. in your prayer time? Right. How many ever felt like you were praying but you didn't reach heaven? That you didn't have a breakthrough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you, when you know you're finished praying, mm -hmm. when you're finished praying, is when you hear from God. Come mm on. -hmm. If you still haven't heard from God, keep praying. Amen. Yeah. You still haven't had a touch from God, keep yeah. praying. Yeah. I remember the old church that I was brought up in. We used to come to the altar every after every service. Mm -hmm. I mean, you knew. I don't care what preacher was preaching. I don't care if it was our pastor or our guest speaker. 
or another hermano or another hermana or whoever it was, we knew at the end of the service they were given an altar call. Anybody been, been to a church like, like that? That it was a natural thing to go to the altar. Every message was setting up for people to come to the altar. And one time I asked my dad, because he always went to the altar. After every sermon, every message. My dad had a habit of always going to the altar. Sometimes he was the first one there. And I asked my dad one time, I said, Dad, he said, I said, Dad, how do you know when you're finished spending time at the altar? I mean, sometimes I see you, Dad, sometimes it's like five minutes, yeah, two minutes, yeah. seven minutes, eight minutes. He said, Mijo, as soon as I know God, I can feel the touch of God, I know I have prayer. Sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's two minutes, sometimes it might be a little bit longer. He said, but I keep staying at the altar, I keep praying until I know the Holy Spirit is spoken to me yes. and I have touched heaven. So sometimes we don't know what to pray. That's what it says. Look at that. We should. We don't know what to pray. But thank God. Look at this. The Spirit Himself. I want you to know the Spirit is moving right now, yes. and this is what He's doing. Yes. He's making intercession yes. for us. Yes. Amen. Mm. Come on. Yes, sir. So no matter what, come down here. Come on down. He, he He's making intercession for us. You know what the Holy Spirit is doing right now in your life? He's interceding for you. Have you ever seen a police officer in a, in a time of maybe road construction? Maybe they went down in one lane or, you know, narrowed down lane or there was an accident. And uh, Brother, Brother Edward, can you come and help me hold my microphone for just a moment? And, and, and this is what he's doing. Talk to me, somebody. He, he's directing traffic. You ever seen him? And they got right, 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 right. Telling that lane, you wait. Uh -huh. Maybe the lights down. Maybe the power went out. Maybe they're doing electrical work. Uh, they had to send the CPS or whoever. I don't know. Whatever these guys are doing, electrical guys. He's like, this. You, you, ever, you, ever, you ever seen him? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Uh uh. Devil, you're not going to attack him. Devil, you're not going to attack him. See, there's some things that God protected you from this week. I said, there's some things God protected you from this week. Oh, oh, oh. There were some things the Holy Spirit said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You're not going to backslide. You're not going, you're not going to that bar. Come on, somebody. You're not going to that cantina. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't go out with him. Come on, somebody. Don't go out with her. Uh-uh, uh-uh. That's what he's doing. He's interceding. And then there's other things he's saying. Okay, come on in. Come on in the blessing of God. Okay, that's a good relationship. Come on, come on, come on. Go to church. Go to Livingstone Family Church. Come on, somebody. Amen. Isn't that good? Yeah. The Holy Ghost is interceding for us. He's stopping the plans of the enemy and he's allowing the blessing of God to come. Glory to God. And I feel that this morning. But it doesn't stop there. But it says, for us, somebody say, Pastor's talking about me. For us, there are groanings that cannot be explained, cannot be articulated, cannot be spoken in natural words. That is the law of intuition. It's not the groanings of the Spirit. He's interceding. That's His work. That's His job. And He's in us. But he wants us to begin to grow and mature to the point that we begin to tap in to the intuition of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm. Now, can y'all handle me this, this morning? Come on. Right. Okay. All right. So Paul, the apostle, is trying to teach us here as believers that the Holy Spirit helps us in our time of weakness and also... To pray when we don't know what to pray more accurately, more effectively, and so that we can be in tune with the will of God for our lives. Amen. All right. Yes. But the groanings, okay. the groanings has to do with us. It's what we feel in our hearts that cannot be properly put into words. It's what it says. Yeah. So these are the intuitions. I love what 
What the Greek word is, I didn't put it on the screen, but just make note of it. If you'd like to write it down, try to spell it, try to figure it out. It's the, the Greek word for groanings here is the word stena g, g mois. Stena g mois. This is what it means. Unspeakable pushings of the heart. That's what my wife felt. Something was pushing her to apply for that job. Right. Something was pushing her. If she would operate it in the mind, she would not. Don't waste your, just, you're wasting your time. Yeah, yeah. Had she listened to her carnal mind, she yeah. would have said, don't even give it a thought. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But something was pushing her. That's what it means in the Greek. It's the pushings of the heart. Mm -hmm. One other definition means these are uh, things too deep for words. Mm -hmm. Man, there's things when God speaks to us, they're so deep, like we can't that. explain it. Yeah. It also means to have inexpressible words that cannot be explained. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Mm. Yes, sir. Now, can we go a little deeper? Let's, let's get into it now. All right. What is, put on the screen, what is the law of intuition? Here it is. It is the gut feeling you get when you know something is either right are wrong. Mm -hmm. Can we get that church? Yes. It is the gut feeling that you and I feel we know something that is right or wrong. We could say it like this. It's seen with the spirit. Mm -hmm. We could say it like this. It's the whisper of your soul. Yes, yeah, We could also say it like this. It's the feeling that you get that you can't visibly see anything, but you know something is up. Amen. Yeah. You know something is yeah. going on. Yeah. But it's not something weird. It's not mysterious. It's not suspicious. You know, just being suspicious about something. No, it's deeper than that. It's a growing in your heart. It's not something um, spooky or a figment of your imagination. Now, a good example that we have, and I pray this in my life, is in First Chronicles. So let's go there real quick. First Chronicles 12, verse 32. First Chronicles, that's in the Old Testament. First Chronicles 12, 32. Thank you. And this is what it says. That the sons of Issachar had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Stop right there. Now this was a time when David was going to be ceremonially received as the new king over Israel. And different tribes came in a place called Hebron, which Hebron means friendship. And they came, different tribes, different people came, and they wanted to bless them. And they wanted to, uh, but the Bible says they were, they were men of war. They were men of battle. They were men that were strong. And they came from different tribes. But this was the fewest number compared to all of the other tribes, the sons of Issachar. And by the way, the word Issachar means reward or recompense. Mm. Reward or recompense. Right, right. See, anytime you walk in the spirit of intuition, you will be rewarded by God. Yes. Mm. Yes. Good. Good. See, when my wife heard that voice say, apply, guess what? God already knew there was a blessing on the other yes. side. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because the spirit of Issachar was working in her. Come on, lift your hands and receive it. Father, right now we receive the spirit of the sons of Issachar to know what we need to know yeah. in Jesus' name. Come yeah. on, give God praise. Yeah. Yeah. These sons of Issachar, they were the fewest in quantity compared to the other tribes. They only had 200. But they were so essential because Israel would not make one decision without discernment mm. from the spirit 
of the sons of Issachar. So you need to understand that as a believer, you need to tap into this law of intuition. Yeah. Not only will it, you be blessed, but it will help you avoid things that you don't need to go through. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yes, okay, are we learning something this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Now, shall I continue? Yes. All right. Let me give you now the three stages. The three stages of, uh, of people relative to the law of intuition. Three stages that people are in, okay? These are the three stages or levels that people are in in regards or relative to the law of intuition. All right, number one, there are people who are who naturally have the gift of intuition. Ooh, that's yeah. All right, yeah. the first thing I want you to know is that there are some people, and you might be one of them, that you're gifted. You just automatically know certain things hmm. that yeah. other people can't see. Yeah. There's certain things that God's gifted you. Now, don't get a big head about it. Don't get braggadocious about it. But learn the reason why. This is what I learned. The reason why God has gifted me, and I know he's gifted all of us because the Bible says we are all gifted by God, Amen. is never to just exalt yourself. That's right. The gift that God gives us, remember this church, is to share. Yeah. It's to help. It's to edify. It's yeah. to bless somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no reason to be jealous of somebody else's gift. Amen. Try that again. There's no reason to be jealous of somebody else's church, somebody else's gift, somebody else's calling. Come on. The real people of God don't compete with one another. We complete one another. Yeah. about one of these gifts that I believe if you got this gift, you're walking automatically in the in the gift of intuition. Here it is. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8. The Bible teaches us that there are nine gifts of the Spirit. And I'm not going to take the time to give you all the nine gifts, but I just want to focus on a couple of them. Look at this. Verse 8, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. So here is what I want you to know. If you're gifted by God, more than likely, that word of knowledge is in your life. Mm. Amen. Yeah. You know things by the way, by way of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know things. The Holy Ghost gave you a word. A word of knowledge. Usually the basic difference between the word of wisdom and word of knowledge is the word of wisdom usually is regarding a current or a future uh, decision that you need to make and you need God's wisdom. And the word of knowledge is usually some information that you need to know regarding your past or something to avoid. Yeah. So when you got the gift of intuition, you're walking in that gift, I believe, of the word of knowledge. Now, I heard a story about a pastor who uh, here in America had a thriving, successful church. But because he made some unhealthy decisions in his marriage, in his finances, in his home, guess what? He was forced to resign his church. And he felt like a failure. And, and he felt like he had hurt his wife, his family. He got so bad that his wife ended up divorcing him and he, he just strayed away from God. And there was a season when he was walking away from God. But the Lord didn't give up on him. How many know that the Lord doesn't give up on us? How, how many thank God for his mercy? Because my Bible says that the gifts of God are without repentance. When God gives you a gift, God doesn't take it back. How many thank God that our Lord is not an Indian gift? Amen. And so the Holy Spirit started speaking to that man. No longer pastor. No longer married to that same woman. Lost relationship with his children. And, but the Holy Spirit started to speak to that man. Now listen, the Holy Spirit started to speak to that pastor. Mm. And told him, I'm not through with you. Mm. I still want to use you. Amen. And uh, so years later, 
The Lord put it in his heart to go help missionaries in Brazil. He was in America, living in America. But the Lord put it in his heart to go help missionaries in Brazil. So he traveled and you know got all the passport, everything that he needed, and he took a trip to a small church, a small church in Brazil. And he met the pastor there, and he wanted to help. He said, I just want to help. All of a sudden, when he looked straight in the eyes of that Brazilian pastor of that small church in Brazil, the man's eyes just widened. They just got big. The pastor looked at him and started weeping and started crying. Didn't even know the pastor, but he started weeping under the presence of God. And through an interpreter, he asked if he could pray for that pastor. And he laid hands on him and he prayed for him. And after that prayer, that American pastor testified that he had never felt healed and that he could let go of his past until that pastor prayed for him. He said something happened. He could feel the awesome presence of God. That God was liberating him, mm -hmm. delivering him. He finally, he said that pastor, through that interpreter, I finally felt free for all the years that I felt guilt and condemnation in my uh, failures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And God had set him free through that prayer of that pastor. And then that American pastor, through the interpreter, he said, who was that masked man? <laughs> <laughs> who was that long ring no. He said, who was that man? Through the interpreter, listen to this, it's going to blow your mind. Through the interpreter that pastor shared with him, he said, 20 years ago, wow. when I was praying, he said that pastor's face came to my mind. 20 years ago, wow. I had a picture of that pastor in my mind. I never met him, I never seen him, but the Lord showed me a face of him. Sir. in another country well. and the Lord told me when I prayed that one day you're going to have an opportunity to minister healing and strength and forgiveness to him yeah. and the Lord told me today is that day wow. and the strange thing about all this is 20 years ago that pastor wasn't even a Christian that pastor wasn't even saved. But God knew because a man tapped in to the law of intuition. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Isn't that good? Amen. Are we learning something? Amen. So the first group of people is their gift. I believe that pastor in Brazil had that gift of intuition. If you have that gift, ask the Lord to use it. Ask the Lord to share it. It's never God's will to put your gift on the shelf Amen. and to collect dust. God wants you to use it. And whatever gift God's given you, share it because that's how you're honoring God. Amen. Secondly, the second stage of people relative to intuition is there are people who can be nurtured to have it. And I believe I might be talking to maybe most of you here this morning. Maybe. Okay, you don't have a gift of intuition. You know, it just seems like you uh, you always get tricked. No. <laughs> it just seems like you're always you're the gullible one. Yeah. It's like you're no you ever know you ever heard someone, man, and you don't don't you learn? You ever told you know seen someone that you always see them get walked on? Yeah. You know, and they they you know they always get tricked. They always get scammed. We got anybody like that that you always are the ones that get walked on, okay? If that's your case, you can be trained to get this gift. Amen. You can be nurtured to have it. Mm. See, this is what I've learned in life. This is good right here. You need to be careful who you are connected to. Yes. Yes. You need to be connected with people that are gifted and called by God. Yes. Be around people that have a prayer life. Right. Be around people that know how to talk to God. Yeah. Be around people that know the word. Yeah. Be around people yeah. who don't panic when they hear negative things. Right. Right. Yeah. Because why? 
Because when you're around that anointing, it rubs off on you. Yes. Yes. When you're around the right mentors as a protege, it affects you. Yep. Right? Yep. See, now what? what I've learned in life. I've learned this in life. There are some people who want what you've earned. Right. Yep. And there's others that want what you learned. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 There's some people that just want what you've accomplished mm -hmm. and ride on the coattail of your success. Yep. And there's others that want to know how you got that level of yep. success. Yeah. Yeah. And they want to know how did you get that? Yes, sir. Teach me, pastor. Teach me, mentor. Show me, my brother, how God brought you out of that situation. Show me how you got into that home. Show me how God has been blessing you. Show me what you're believing God for. Yes. Because some people want what you earn. Those are the ones you got to watch out for. Yes. Watch out for people who just call you when you're on the top of the mountain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch out for those relatives who just want you when you won the lotto. Yeah. Right. <laughs> watch out for those relatives. When they know you got your income tax return. Yeah. Come on now. Isn't it amazing that we know how to find out people when they got money? It's amazing how we can, we do our homework, don't we? Hey, I heard I got your income. How did you know? Oh, I got my weights. I know some people like that. They know how to follow you, track you down. Man, they got to... They ought to be investigators or something. Yes, sir. Yes. But the real, but the real relationships, the healthy relationships, the solid, strong relationships are people that want you to teach them yes. what you've learned. Yes. See, the most important thing about education, mm -hmm. here it is, appetite. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Now it is possible. Now, this is good news right now. Yes, sir. It is possible. If you are not walking in that gift right now of intuition, and you've been tricked, and you've been lied on, and you keep making mistakes and failures, if you hang in there, you just stick with that relationship that's healthy, pretty soon you're going to walk even in a double anointing. Yep. Uh -huh. That's what happened to Elisha. Look at the scripture. I'm going to point it out to you real quick. 2 Kings 2, verse 9 and 10. You know that Elijah was the great prophet of the Lord that called fire from heaven. Right. Consumed the 850 false prophets of Baal and the enemy. And, uh, and God used Elijah in a mighty glorious way. But he was about ready to be caught up in a world. God's about ready to take him home. Hmm. And he says to his protege, his disciple, Elisha, he said, look at this. He said, so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask what may I do for you before I'm taken away? Mm -hmm. God's about ready to take me home in a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. But what do you want? And this is what Elisha said. Please let me have a double portion. Let me have a double portion of your intuition. Come on. Let me have a double portion of your heart that groans with God. Amen. Let me have a, a double portion of how you see blessings and breakthroughs in your life. Yes. Right. And look at verse 10, what he said. This is what he, we respond. He said, you've asked a hard thing. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it won't be. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you see me to the end, if you stay in relationship with me, mm -hmm. you're going to walk in the double portion yes. of what I have. Yes. Right. yes. I believe that's powerful. Yes. See, you might know somebody who's very gifted right now, and you may really think, man, I sure wish, man, I could never be like him. I'll never have that annoying. Oh, yes, you can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, you can. Amen. Because it is God's will to the anointing to grow in previous and future generations. Yes. Yes. There ought to be more in the next generation. There ought to be a heavy anointing yes. on their lives. Amen. I'm not praying for my children to carry my spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm praying they do more yes. than yes. 
yeah. what I did. Yeah. That they see greater works. Yeah. That yeah. they see the mighty yeah. manifestation of God. Yeah. You know what I want? I want people around me that if they appreciate me, they value me. Mm. I, that was a weak amen. I didn't hear nobody. But <laughs> if there's somebody that values their yeah. pastor, yeah. you know what I pray for them? Yeah. Thank you. You know what I pray for them? You know what I pray for you? If you want to hang around me and catch the anointing on my life, I pray you outdo me. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's right. I don't, got, I don't got no insecurity complex here. Right. I know my gifting. I know my calling. Yes. Right. You can't do what I can do. Yes. I can't do what you can do. Right. Yes. But I pray, Lord, let them outdo me. Yes. Let my children outpreach me. Yes. Right. Let the ministers of this church outpreach me. Yes. Let them outminister me. I know some of you say, no, nah, I'm not even going to try it. No, you yeah, you might. <laughs> You can do all things through Christ. Yes, yes. Elijah got the double portion mm -hmm. of Elijah. Now, Elijah was a powerful man of God. Mm -hmm. But because he stayed with him yeah. and he was loyal to the man of God, right. he carried that mantle Amen. on his life. Amen. All right. But now, the last one I'm going to give you. <laughs> Number three, there are those who will never, no. never <laughs> have intuition. <laughs> I see, I see heads turning right now. I'm not talking about your neighbor. I'm talking about your brother and sister in Christ. But there's some people, no matter how much they pray for it or ask God for it, they need direction, they, they don't, they're not gonna, they're not gonna get it. This is this. Some people are destined to succeed. That's the gifted ones. And some people are determined to succeed. That's the ones that are nurtured. But there are others who just don't want to succeed. See, if somebody tricks you the first time, shame on them. But if someone tricks you the second time, shame on you. I'm going to have to help myself. That's good preaching, Pastor Kimon. See, if somebody tricks you the first time and you got scammed and they got your credit card information and all that and they lied to you and they tricked you and you answer that email that said, I'm in Zimbabwe and I just inherited a million dollars but I need you to send me your bank card information. Shame on them for doing that. They're about to answer to God for that. But if they do it again, and you send your information again. Shame on you. You didn't learn your lesson. I'm not preaching all right this morning. See, there's something worse than making a mistake. And that's not learning from your mistake. We all make mistakes. We all fail and fall short of the glory of God. But we got to learn our lesson. Come on, somebody. We got to get back up and say, not this time, devil. Not I'm walking in the spirit of truth. Amen. So in the in regards to the law of intuition, church, there's some people that just ain't going to get it. All right. Right. And don't worry about that. You don't worry about that. You just keep focusing on God. Look at Proverbs 4.19 and then I'm going to quickly, quickly, quickly move on. Mm. Praise God. Anybody's stomach's turning right now? No? Yeah. Hey, you doing all right? <laughs> Did you get your breakfast tacos already? No? Okay. All right. Here it is. I won't keep you much longer. We'll be done when I'm through. <laughs> Proverbs 4.19 says, The way of the wicked is like darkness. Mm -hmm. See, these are the people that will never get it. Their, their way is like darkness, and they don't know what makes them stumble. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's people like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. That you, they can even, about ready to lose their marriage, lose their home, and they still won't call on God. Yeah, 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 that's true. I mean, know some people like that. Yeah. You're like, what is it going to take right. for them to get in the house of God? Yeah. Yeah. They almost died, mm -hmm. but they still don't want God in their lives. Yeah. Right. They, they, they had an accident, mm. and they should have been six feet under, but by the grace of God, they survived. Yes. Yes. 
But they're still doing their own thing. I know some people like that. God has done a miracle in their lives. But the miracle didn't change them. And they stumble. And they never get it. But you don't worry about that. Because we're the ones that go get it. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Now, real quickly. Real quickly. Real quickly. You say, Pastor, what do I do? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> what do I do, Pastor, when I feel those pushings of my heart? Ooh. What do I do, Pastor, when I feel the groanings? Maybe you get that picture, like that pastor. You see a picture of somebody. Mm. Maybe somebody you know. Maybe somebody you don't know. Right. What do I do when I get those moments of intuition. I'm glad you asked. Number one, you got to make changes. You got to make changes. Sometimes change is painful, but you know what's more painful? Is being a pl in a place where you don't belong. So you got to remember, change has to happen. God is speaking to you. There's some groanings going on because God's trying to get you out of your comfort zone. He's trying to get you out of your comfort zone. And if we don't change, we don't grow. Yeah. Right. Say that with me. Say, if I don't change, right. I don't grow. Right. Say it again. Say, if I don't change, I, don't change. I really don't grow. Right. And guess what? If we don't grow, we're not living. Right. The Bible tells us that we are being transformed by the Spirit of God yes. in the image of God. Yes. When you feel those pushings of God, see those pictures of someone in your heart. Yes. God's, you know what God's saying? Make some changes. Yes. Make some changes. Number two. Be very practical. Second thing you do when you feel those pushings and the intuition, the groanings, is you move forward. Yes, Number two, you move forward. Amen. You don't stay in the past. You don't dwell on the past. You don't walk in fear. Somebody once said that three words they learn about everything in life. It goes on. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Life goes on. Yeah. I'm not trying to minimize your pain. Right. I'm not trying to minimize your trials. Mm. We all have trials. Yes, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Yes. Yes. But I'm telling you, you can't stay there. Yes. You yes. got to move forward. That's right. yes. Yes. When you feel those intuitions, when you feel the promptings of God, when you, when, when you feel the groanings, you have to move forward. Amen. Yes. Just real quick, 1 Samuel 16, 1. Samuel the prophet was weeping and weeping because of the bad decisions that King Saul had made. He, he was rebelling against God. He was doing his own thing. Finally, God spoke to him and said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? How long are you going to weep about your loss? How long are you going to stay stagnant in your walk with God? God said, I rejected him. I need you to get up, throw away the Kleenex tissues, get a bottle of oil, fill that horn with oil, and go to Jesse's house. Because I got a David I'm about ready to annoy. Come on, somebody. Because I got a man after God's own heart. And you remember what, what happened? He finally moved on. Samuel moved on. And he, and he goes to get a visit to Jesse's house. And he tells Jesse, uh, uh, give me all your boys. And the first one he saw was Eli. And, and, and uh, he said, this has to be him. And, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to Samuel. He said, don't look at what you see on the outside. Yeah. Mm. Yes. That's not him. Mm. He looks good on the outside. Right. But on the inside, on. he doesn't have the heart of God. Because God, he said, doesn't look on the outside. Right. God looks on the inside. Well, I said, God doesn't look on the outside. Yeah. But God looks at the heart yeah. that's in the inside. Yes, he does, right? So you got to move forward. That's what we do. We move forward. And here's the last thing I want to give you. We have to maximize. Here's the third thing we do. We got to maximize the word of God. Don't rely entirely on. Just on your natural mind. Because guess what? Our natural mind is limited. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. I'm winding it down. Intuition is not a light bulb. Right. That goes off and on. Right. That's not intuition. You know what intuition is? It's a flickering candle. Mm. 
It's sensitive. Hmm. See, with a candle, it doesn't take a lot of effort to blow it out. Right. You say, how do you know? Because I had to use them during the winter storm. <laughs> you say, how do you know about the candles? Because that's what kept our room warm yeah. for two days. That we didn't have power. <laughs> the light bulb was going off and on. Okay. The grid was going off and on. But the candle, well, we had to watch it. Yeah. We had to watch it. Mm. That's what you got to do with intuition. You got to protect mm. the anointing. Right. You got to protect what God showed you. Right. You got to be sensitive to the yeah. Holy Spirit. That's good. Mm. Now, That's good. we have to maximize the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Psalms 119, 105. This might be my last scripture. I think it is. Psalms 119, 105. Y'all enjoying this message today? <laughs> Why do I say maximize the word when you're feeling those groanings? Because it says right here, the word of God, Psalms 119, 105. The word is a lamp unto my feet. Amen. It's a candle. Yes. It's a candle or a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. So when I don't know what to do, I get into the word. Yes, sir. And I say, God, what are you showing me? And the Lord will confirm it when you get into the word, yes. when you study the word. So the law of intuition, as I said, it is that gut feeling. I'm about ready to close now. It's that gut feeling. Can y'all put that back on again? That very first note that I gave you on the law of intuition. It is the gut feeling, thank you, that you get when you know that something is right or something is wrong. Yes. Yes. Now, I gave you a couple examples already of things that are right, that the Spirit leads us, right. that that pastor was right on target, amen? amen. Even, even though it was 20 years later, he was right on target. Yeah. Right. Sometimes God gives you an intuition about something. It's not until years later. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's right away. Yeah. Sometimes it's something current that's going on. And here it is. I close with this thought. Sometimes God gives you a groaning, an intuition to warn someone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now, this is what happened in Campina, Brazil in 2005. 2005. In Campina, Brazil, there was a godly mother that had a daughter that was straying away from God. And she wanted to hang around people that were partying. The daughter wanted to hang around people that were doing things wrong. But she grew up in church. She had once served the Lord. She had strayed away from God. One day, she said, Mom, I'm going to go out with my friends. They're coming to pick me up. And in her heart, she had an intuition. She shouldn't go. Mm. In her heart, something told her danger is awaiting. Yeah. Don't go. She told her daughter that she ran out to that car when they came to pick her up. And she could smell alcohol in that car. Mm. All of her friends that picked her up had been drinking. Some were even drunk. Mm. And she puts her hand on her daughter's shoulder. She was already now in that car in the back. And she told her daughter, she said, Miha, don't go. She said, no, mom, I'm going to go. You can't stop me. And she said, okay. Vayan con Dios. Then go with God. And may the Lord protect you. Mm. And she said, well, mom, God, the only place God can come in this car is in the trunk because it's all full inside. Only place, she said, God's going to get in this car is in the trunk. He took off. Her mom just kept on praying. But in her heart, that law of intuition was kicking in. Yeah. Something, something tells me this is not good. You may know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Something tells me danger Amen. is on the horizon. Yeah. Something tells me the enemy is at work. Just a few hours later, Everyone in that car were in a fatal accident. They all died. 
in that car accident. When the police arrived, the EMS, and they looked at the damage of the car, to their surprise, everything, the car was totaled. But for some strange reason, the trunk was intact. Not one dent, not one damage to the trunk. Remember what the girl said? If God's going to get in this car, he only got, we only got room for him in the trunk. This is a true story. It happened in Campina, Brazil, 2005. When they were investigating the damage and the people came to survey all that, they noticed they opened the trunk. And in that trunk was a crate of eggs. Wow. Not one of the eggs wow. was cracked oh. or broken. Wow. Wow. Amen. See that young girl failed to listen to the voice of God. Right. That law of intuition mm. told her mom, Miha, don't go. Listen, if you don't have the law working in you, you better listen to people who know God. Yes. Yes. I said, you better pay attention to people who know God. Every head down and every eye clean. But what we need is the Holy Spirit yes. to be welcome yes. in our lives. Yes. Amen. Father, I've done my best this morning. To share what you laid in my heart to these precious, precious people and those watching my live stream and Facebook. Lord, you know, you know the things that we've had damaged and affected our lives in a negative way, God. You know those, the intuition that we missed. God, you know the times that we didn't understand what you were doing. But Lord, we ask you, Lord God, to Fill us with your spirit. Give us the spirit of intuition this morning. Mm. How many of y'all this morning would admit, with every eye closed, every head bowed, how many of y'all would admit this morning, and be honest with me today, and most importantly with God, and you would say, Pastor, I know what you're talking about. I have felt those moments of intuition by the Holy Spirit. I have felt God warning me about someone, that they were in danger, that they were in harm's way. Or maybe you felt God telling you to do something and it opened up a door that God blessed you with. Can anybody relate to that? Well, if not, you can begin to tap into it today. You can tap into the voice of God. Because my Bible says that my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And you are the sheep of God. Yes. In just a moment, we're going to open up the altar. And if anybody wants to, this is between you and God, and you say, Pastor, I want to get closer to God, and I want to make sure that that law of intuition, the groanings of the Spirit in my heart are working to help me avoid pitfalls, to help me avoid disaster and destruction, whatever the case may be. But we're going to give you a chance today, church. Those watching by Facebook, I want you to get in a place of, of an altar, get in a place of Humility, get in a place of prayer and change and ask God to just give you that spirit to know right from wrong. To know when something that can't be explained, that you'll already know it in your heart. But we got to invite the Holy Spirit to do it. Can I get you to stand to your feet this Sunday morning? All over this room, if we can please stand to our feet. As we sing this song, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I want you to come and let the Lord use you and be a blessing to someone. If everything is okay in your heart with God, then you can just stand right there where you're standing and worship the Lord with us. In Jesus' name, if you need prayer, we'll minister to you as well. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit.
standing right there in your home, right there in your workplace. Maybe you need to pull over to the side and watch it in your car. Just ask the Lord to touch you. He will do it right now.
clap your hands if you know the presence of the Lord is in this room. Remember, Holy Spirit is always right. Yep. Amen. I said the Holy Spirit yep. is always right. Amen. Amen. And remember this, God is not a tease. Right. When God speaks something to you, he's not playing around. He's serious. Right. He's either trying to take you into the promised land or protect you from going to Egypt. Right. But listen to the voice of God. Yes. Did you ever receive something from yes. the Lord today? to him for the blessing as we go home. Father, may you bless us and may you keep us. Make your face to shine upon us this week. Lord God, we thank you for the wonderful time that we've had in your presence today. Hearing your word, enjoying the worship and the praise and giving our gifts and offerings to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for putting that sign up, Lord God. We know that there's still some touch-ups they need to do, Lord God, but we thank you, God, for all that you're doing in this church and this ministry. And we lift up all of our brothers and sisters watching us by live stream and Facebook. Lord God, we pray you continue to strengthen them and lift them up yes. and to bless them as well, Lord. May your face shine upon us. And Lord, may your grace be upon us and give us peace. Yes. Yes. That surpasses all revelation and understanding. Yes. And Lord, take us home safely as we come back tomorrow night for prayer and Wednesday night Bible study. We love you and we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Love on somebody you were just